So in this segment, we're going to be talking about um, UK fishermen, UK shell farmers threatening legal action over a ban on exports to the EU. So this is not um, British shell fishermen suing the EU. They are suing DEFRA by the looks of things, and specifically George Eustace. So this is hilarious. Um, there's a lot of articles and stuff to get through. So, you know, we'll take our time and get through it. But... Uh, Oh my god, I was not expecting this. Brexit, this season of Brexit is phenomenal because we are seeing new characters emerge and take centre stage here. With this case, it's the shell fishermen who have been, you know, impacted massively by the government's actions and lies. So if we look at this, so the Environment Secretary, George Eustace, is facing a threat of legal action from shellfish farmers. Over claims that the government has misled the industry over its post-Brexit arrangements with the EU. So basically they're saying that George Eustace has lied to them about um, exports to the EU with regards to shell fishermen, um, you know, which are a big problem for certain industries of the fishing industry or certain sectors, should I say. Um, so a solicitor representing 20 shellfish firms told The Guardian that the government has shown negligence and mal malad administration, shall we? I don't know what that means, and that a group action was being considered for compensation. So basically, they're suing the government, trying to get the, trying to recoup the money, I think, that they should have made from the sale of shellfish to the EU. So this is a bold strategy here, you know. This is a very bold strategy right here, and we don't know if um, they're actually going to do it because they've got until September, I believe. The UK government have got until September to get the EU to accept class b and c shellfish for purification and that's not going to happen um separately an export of mussels sent a legal letter to the secretary of state this is george eustace saying the firm would sue for damages if the shellfish market with the eu was not opened by september i mean that's not going to happen so you know let's hope this guy backs up his tough talk um, the movement, the move comes as the UK finally hands a roadmap to Brussels on Northern Ireland following the launch of legal action by the UK. So that's kind of irrelevant. I don't know why they kept throwing that into the article. It's mentioned a few times, but um, you know that's an important uh, thing that's happening right now, um, and we'll cover that at the time. You know when the time comes for uh, whichever legal action they're going to take. So live mussels, cockles, oysters and other shellfish caught in the most most of the UK's waters are no longer allowed to enter the EU following Britain leaving the customs union and single market on New Year's Eve. So these are not new rules. These are existing rules the, the, the UK have fallen foul of because we decided to become a third country, like leaving the gym and then getting mad you can't use the weights anymore. Like we're out, G. We can't access certain facilities anymore. We out, you know. Useless officials, sorry, I could say useless officials, useless officials and other ministers have claimed the bloc originally planned to let the trade, this trade resume after Brexit and that it altered its position earlier in the year. The thing is, with, um, I think it's under most favourable nations um, rules in the WTO that if they were going to let the UK uh, export uh, shellfish, um, to the EU, live shellfish for purification, they would have to do that for other countries that also want to export live shellfish to the EU as long as they are within the EU's um, rules for, you know, um, food safety. So this this argument that, you know, these are new rules isn't the case because if the EU were going to do this, they would have to shut out all of third party, third country exports of uh, sh live shellfish or non-processed um, shellfish. And we haven't seen any other countries complain about this stuff. So either other countries don't do this because these rules have always existed or suddenly they're shut out now and they're not saying anything. So this idea that these new rules are new is not the case. And that's also something that's acknowledged by George Eustace in a separate piece. So we'll, we'll look at that a bit later. So this is a partner at Andrew Jackson LLP. This is one of the lawyers who is representing 20 of the uh, shellfish firms saying we are taking uh, we are taking a leading counsel's opinion as to the government's actions in regard to the EU trade agreement and the assurances given by the government to make live shellfish um, exports. So what they're saying is they're looking at what the e what it says within the trade agreement and what the government have said about live exports of shellfish. And if it doesn't match up, then the government may get sued over that as well for, you know, um, misleading these fishermen. Um, we feel that there has been a negligence, and that word again, maladministration, mal regarding the government's negotiations on the agreement and its treatment of our clients. So it's going to be interesting to see if they're successful in this and how much they can get out of the government. 
and if the government actually settle on this, because that's a possibility too. Solicitors for Offshore Shellfish, a 30-year-old business employing 15 people in Devon, um, wrote to the Secretary of State on the 25th of March, stating that ministers and officials from the department had repeatedly given false hope to shell fishermen, uh, shell shellfish farmers, uh, suggesting their business would be able to continue trading with the EU. And that's something we spoke about before in another video, um, which was about you know when the government put out propaganda pieces in different newspapers, where one shell fisherman was saying that he was told that he would be able to do a large export of shellfish to France, and then um, a few weeks before the export was meant to happen, he was told, you can't do it. And he couldn't sell them in the UK because we don't have the purification facilities. This is absolute madness here. So the assurance were given by DEFRA gave rise to a legitimate expectation that the exports of live bauvive mollusks from Class B waters from the UK to the EU would continue after the 1st of January. So if they have this in writing, then I think the, I think DEFRA might be sunk here. They're going to have real problems. If it's just phone calls, then I don't know. In the event of our clients are unable to restart trade in September, it will become necessary for them to dismantle and remove the offshore farm. And in this case, they might claim damages. So so there's another one saying that our clients um, said the Shellfish Association of Great Britain have been in discussions with Victoria Prentice, um, a parliamentary undersecretary for farming, fisheries and food. She was the one at a um, nativity play instead of reading the agreement and were informed in a telephone conversation on the 9th of March that the EU's position is simply wrong. And this is this is brilliant because they're going to tell the EU that their legal position is wrong and, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. You know, this is something George Eustace has mentioned as well. This is phenomenal. Like, this whole situation right here is going to be one of the big blockbusters of this season of Brexit, I'm telling you. Because if they have this stuff in writing, which I believe they do, the, the, the DEFRA are going to be in serious trouble here. Uh, however, no legal basis or advice from DEFRA has been provided to support this position. Indeed, our clients have been forced to seek independent counsel's opinion on this matter. So basically, they're saying that DEFRA are saying, that, and DEFRA and the um, Department for Fisheries are saying that the EU are wrong, but they have not offered any actual evidence to say that the EU are wrong in this regard and their legal position is wrong. This This is... You know, if they cannot offer anything, I can't see a judge saying that, uh, siding with DEFRA over this. I cannot see it. I'm no, I have no legal experience, but this looks like a slam dunk. So finally, from this article, the um, talking about legal action, it says the legislation was clear that the export of live bal uh, bivalve mollusks from Class B waters for purification could continue after, this is a DEFRA person, by the way, in case I didn't mention that, uh, could continue fuel purification and could continue after the transition period. Our correspondence with the commission confirmed this. So you have documents, show us. Show us the documents. Show us the correspondence. The Commission have now, uh, now amended their import rules without scientific or technical justification. And if that's the case, you can show us which law amends this. Which law specifically does this. Effectively, they have changed the law to justify their position in blocking the trade. All right, that's a load of nonsense. And if we look at the BBC's reporting on this, which says that the EU has placed an indefinite restriction on British fishermen wanting to sell live ballers, bivalve uh, muscles and all that that's rubbish because these were the rules whilst we were a member of the eu we helped to implement these rules because it benefited us because by stopping the export of unprocessed live uh, bivalve mollusks that means the uk industry has a stronger foothold within that shellfish industry do you understand like does that make sense um that's the reason we did that that's why the eu is in a protectionist block because it protects its members and, you know, um, this going on from the legal, further from the legal action, this is a letter from a lobby group, um, to, a letter from the lobby group to its members said, all along the Department of Sodefra have told us they believe the trade in Class B animals is legal and that the regulation supports this. Now they have changed their position. So at first they said in a letter that this stuff was legal. Now they've told a, um, they have told, um, the Shellfish Association of Great Britain, they were told privately that the DEFRA are now saying that they believe on balance that the EU, um, the EU view that the trade is not legal is in fact correct. This is in complete contrast to everything they've told us so far. So this group here, Shellfish Association of Great Britain, were told privately by George Eustace's department that the, she the EU are okay to do the shellfish ban. They are within the law of doing this. So what does that tell us? That tells us that DEFRA and government ministers have been lying to people and that if it is the case that this group were told, um, the Shellfish Association of Great Britain were told that the EU are not in the wrong and they've done the right thing, which seems to be the case, 
um, <laughs> then, then, then they're sunk. You know, DEFRA are sunk because they can bring these people in as witnesses to any kind of court case to say, yes, I was told by someone working at DEFRA that the EU were legally in the right here. And therefore, by George Eustace telling people that the EU are in the wrong and the situation will be resolved soon. And the fact that, you know, he told people in January and February they could continue selling um, their bivalve mollusks from grade B waters to the EU without an issue um, is further going to weaken the government's legal position. And, you know, you've got quotes here from George Eustace saying that, you know, the EU's legal position is incorrect. Um, stuff like that saying that, um, you know, this law does not make it clear that it does not apply where the mollusks are exported for depuration centre. This is because when they are sent to a depuration centre, they are not yet food for sale. Therefore, the reason given by the EU Commission to this change in policy is not consistent with the EU's existing law. That's what he's saying here. He's saying the EU don't know their own law. That's hilarious. And we'll see that, you know, if, if that's the case, then there should be rules within the TCA that allow uh, legal action if something like this happens so big men yeah get some lawyers together and take legal action against the eu over this if the eu are legally wrong here because you're not going to do that do you know why because you're in the wrong george you're in the wrong so you know he says here uh, my honorable friend makes an important point we believe that EU has simply made an error in interpretation of the law in all regulations it has cited so again you're saying the eu doesn't understand its own laws you know, I'm sure that's going to go down well with them. And if it's the case that they're wrong, take them to court over this. Surely within the TCA, there should have been uh, mechanisms that allow disputes like the North in like the ones within the Northern Ireland Protocol. Like, come on, big man, let's see. Let's see you do something. Um, you know, this is from December 10th. We've talked about this story before where George Eustace got bodied by an EU official, which says that um, in a letter written by George Eustace's department on the 10th of December to UK businesses updating them on their border operation model and specifically prohibitions and restrictions applicable following the end of the transition period, the 1st of January. In your letter, you correctly underline that the export of live biovalve mollusks from Class B production areas to further depuration from the EU uh, to the EU would not be allowed, and it says it here. Um, and this is something we have spoken about before. This was a, an extract from George Eustace's letter to stakeholders. So he had actually written to certain businesses to tell them this would be the case. But then for some reason, George Eustace has been saying in the public and to other groups of fishermen that this would not be the case, and um, they would be allowed to sell um, shellfish from Class B waters to the EU. So, George, which one is it? Like, do you have a split personality, George? What is going on in your department? Like, honestly, is this the best Britain has? Because we should pack it in now if this is the best we've got. Because clearly he sent a letter to certain people on the 10th of December to say that live bivalve mollusks from category B waters for depuration will be forbidden as there is no EHC, European Health Certificate, suitable for them. So he might be able to push for the EU to get a certification for this, but if the EU don't want to do it, they don't have to do it, especially since, I, um, from what I've read, Croatia are doing, their shellfish industry is doing better now because countries can import their shellfish from Croatia so they could try and veto any sort of, um, you know, European Health Certificate for a Class B um, shellfish from for category B water shellfish from a third country like what a joke these people are exports will not be possible boom so this is from the 10th of December so why is George Eustace lying to these people I don't know you know we jump to here you know British fishermen who had been told by the government to expect the ban to last until spring are warning this will be a fatal blow to their business so for some reason you know the UK were fixated on some sort of some sort of message from the EU saying that they were going to look into changing the rules around shellfish and the EU had denied they ever said that and they said they weren't going to change uh, the rules around third country um, shellfish imports. So why George Eustace has somehow, you know, believed this would be the case is beyond me. Um, you know, we go to the Express of all papers, which says that it appears that Britain was fully aware of the restrictions, having voted for these restrictions in 2008, according to um, a Lib Dem um, a, a Lib Dem person, a councillor, saying that the ban on the import of live bauva uh, mollusks is not specifically targeted at the UK as some sort of Brexit revenge. This was written up in 2008. You know, I did look through the EU laws here and here. I couldn't find anything specific on it, which really annoys me. But if you guys can see that, um, if you guys can actually find it and comment it, I'd be very grateful for that. But this seems to be the case, especially if George Eustace has admitted privately that the EU are legally in the right for doing this. So who knows? 
at this point. Um, hopefully someone can verify it for me. I have been looking. I couldn't specifically find it. But, um, you know, multiple articles have ran with the story. And um, we see that, you know, this from Politico, this is our final piece, that some businesses expect the UK to negotiate with the EU to ease the restrictions. I mean, maybe they can try and push for uh, the EU to have um, a European health certificate for Class B um, shellfish. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen because these are not foods ready for consumption. They still have to be processed. So I don't know, you know, and it's not in the EU's interest to do this anyways. They don't owe us this. Um, so, you know, the UK trying to negotiate to ease restrictions, which are standard third country prohibitions that Britain has now, Britain now finds itself subject to outside of the bloc. So Politico have figured it out. They've figured out that these are standard third country rules that the EU has set up. So why the BBC did not say that, I don't know. You know, why the BBC have not put it like the same way Politico has, I don't know. And the thing that annoys me about the BBC is there's no name on this article. So you cannot add specific journalists and say, you're wrong here. That's what annoys me. Anyways, um, in the case of shellfish, the ban's impact is already clear. Martin Leite, director of Sales Creek Shellfish, is in Flushing, said last week the curbs will destroy his business. He has laid off 52 people down to, uh, because of Brexit, while other businesses have furloughed workers. He should have furloughed them, really. Um, would have given them more time to find another job. But what, what can we tell from this entire story? I don't know how long this video has been going on for. Quite a while, I'd assume. So... What, what can we gather from this story in conclusion? That it looks like DEFRA have given bad information to shell fishermen about the um, the eligibility or the um, ability to sell uh, Class B shellfish into the EU for purification. Now, I've covered it before. The EU have said they didn't, uh, uh, they haven't, they don't allow this. Um, it looks like they haven't allowed this since 2008. However, DEFRA and specifically George Eustace, George Eustace has told people that this is not the case and that trade would be able to continue. Um, and if we just jump to that article one more time, this one here, it looks like it was from the, he knew this from at least the 10th of December, but he would have known this uh, this information has been available for over a decade now because it was the the law or the agreement was passed in 2008. So, you know, back in 2008, I was still in school. I just started secondary school. I was, I think, in year eight, I think, maybe year eight, year nine, depending on the date. So this was a long time ago. This was a long time ago that this agreement was put into place. So we know that George Eustace knew this, at least in December, the bare minimum. His department was telling people, you cannot export cat pea shellfish, okay? So why George Eustace felt the need to lie to people, I don't know. Why George Eustace is going into Parliament, right, and on the on the 8th of February saying that the EU are in the, in the wrong legally, despite telling people privately that the EU are in the right legally, I could not tell you for certain. All I know is... Um, you know, George Eustace should get done for misleading Parliament because that's what he's done here. He's lying to Parliament. And it's time someone in the Labour Party called him out for it because he has misled people when it comes to shellfishing and their rights to export um, shellfish to the EU. And I'm getting sick and tired of group people or certain journalists and media outlets not doing their goddamn job, right? If it takes me, a talking head on YouTube, some kid, right? who barely has an experience in this field to tell you what's going on because certain certain outlets won't do it fine i'll do it but what can we gather from this you know great work from the guardian you know george used to slide to these fishermen he lied to them i don't know why you know he could have been blunt with them he could have been truthful with them he's still lying now some say george used this tomorrow will lie about this because it's simply the case that he's wrong i don't lose my marbles but um yeah like I said, in conclusion, uh, the EU has a ban on third countries selling um, uh, shellfish that are unpurified from uh, uh, from third countries. Cat pea shellfish. Um, George Eustace lied about these things. George Eustace and DEFRA are getting sued for misinformation that most likely if there is any settlement, it will come out of the taxpayer rather than George Eustace personally, which should happen. Anyone who gave the crappy advice out should have to pay for it. Um, you know... George Eustace knew about this, at least, bare minimum, he knew about this 10th of December. Bare minimum, he knew. And he still lied to people. In February, he's still lying to, he was lying to people. It's April. He's probably still lying to people now. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to lose my mind otherwise. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.